The first thing we have to do is to create the asteroid itself. We can start by adding a sphere and placing it where we want the simulation to start. Set the number of subdivisions to 3. Now we want the sphere to fall to the ground and break into hundreds of pieces. This is exactly what we can do with the dynamic of rigid bodies. For those who don't know, rigid body simulations are those that simulate the physics of real-life objects. Basically, objects with a specific mass and subject to the force of gravity. Also, objects that can interact and collide with each other. So, we can select the sphere and in the physics tab, activate the rigid body button. As default, the body is marked as active. This is fine, as the object has to be subject to the forces of the simulation. If you start the simulation, the ball falls down, as we expect to do. But we want the sphere to collide with the ground. So we also have to add the terrain to the simulation. However, it's a good idea to add to the simulation only the portion of the ground we really need, and not the huge terrain we have. So, duplicate the terrain, switch to the edit mode, and select an area around our location. Then, invert the selection and delete the other faces. Finally, select the object and add it to the simulation. However, this time we want to set it as passive, as it only has to act as a collider, and has not to be subject to gravity and other forces. Now the ball hits and stops on the ground. Remember that, when you change a parameter in the simulation, you have to rewind the timeline and play from the beginning. However, the collision seems a bit strange. The ball should have a little bouncing or a slight movement when it hits the ground. The strange behavior is related to the way the dynamic shape of the ball is computed. In order to simplify the computation of collisions, Blender automatically creates, around our mesh, a collision object, that approximates the real shape of the original object. You can see the different shapes in the shape menu. The default shape is the convex hull that creates an envelope around the object. However, this envelope doesn't match perfectly the original object, and this is the reason of the strange behavior. In order to have the most accurate collision, you have to choose mesh. You can set this type of collision both for the ground and the sphere. This means that the original mesh is used for the computation. Be careful to do that with complex objects, as this can slow down the simulation. Now the ball hits and moves on the ground. We can also modify some physics properties such as friction and so on. We will tweak those properties later. For the moment, you can set again convex hull for the sphere. Now we have a problem. We want the asteroid to fall obliquely and not vertically. A way to do that is to add an external force, for example a wind. So, from the force field list, choose wind. Now we have to rotate it and increase the strength, for example 2000. Well, the ball now moves obliquely, exactly as we wanted.
The next step is to find a way to make the sphere break when it hits the floor. The only way to do that is to have a ball already broken before dropping it. In order to do that, select the sphere and choose the cell fracture action in the quick effects menu. Here we can choose the way we want the object to be broken. At the top of the window, we can set where the fractures have to occur. We can leave the default value. It can also be a good idea to increase the noise value in order to have a more random distribution of the points. In the source limit parameter, we can define how many pieces we want. So, let's decrease it to 30. In the recursive shatter panel, we can also break the generated particles in a recursive way. However, we can leave it as it is for now. As a last thing, enter a name for the scene collection. In this way, all the pieces will be placed inside that collection. Finally, press OK and as result, the sphere is fractured in many pieces. With the objects still selected, open the rigid body menu and choose Add Active. All the pieces become active objects in the simulation. Now, remove the original sphere from the simulation. If you play the animation, the ball should fall down and break when it crashes to the ground. However, we have a problem with the simulation. When the pieces of the asteroid hit the ground, they are moved by the wind. Also, it's difficult to calculate the position where the sphere hits the ground. We should change the force and direction of the wind, restart the simulation, and see what happens. In this case, it is more convenient to manually animate the position of the asteroid. The best way to do that is to add an empty object and link the other pieces to it. Before doing that, delete the wind force we created. Now, add an empty inside the collection and place it near the asteroid. Then, add two keyframes to the empty, the first in the starting position, and the second just above the ground, where we want the asteroid to fall. Also, set the interpolation mode as linear. Finally, parent all the pieces to the empty. Select all the objects inside the collection, starting from the empty. In this way, the empty becomes the active object. Now, press Ctrl P and select object and keep transform. But, if you start the simulation, the asteroid moves as before, and it seems to ignore the parent ship with the empty. This because the objects are rigid bodies, and they are only subject to the physics properties of the simulation. In order to animate the asteroid, we have to enable the animated property in the rigid body tab. In this way, the motion of the object will be defined only by the keyframes of the animation. But, of course, we don't want to manually set this property for each of the pieces. You have two way to apply the same settings to multiple objects. First of all, in the outliner, shift-click to select all the pieces of the asteroid. The first object you select is the active object and is displayed with a lighter orange color. Now, press the Alt button and then click on the animated property. In this way, the same setting is applied to all the other objects. The second way is to change the property you want, then right-click on the property you have to change and select, copy to selected. Whatever method you choose, the asteroid now should follow the empty. However, it doesn't hit the ground because, for the moment, the animation is only driven by the keyframes we created. What we have to do 
is to switch the animation type just after the second keyframe. So we have to keyframe the animated property, unchecking it in the next frame. You can do that in the first object inside the collection. In order to copy the same animation to the other pieces, select this object and shift-click the last one. In this way, the first object is the active one. Open the Link and Transfer Data menu and click on Link Animation Data. Now, the asteroid follows the empty in the first part of the animation. And in the second part, it will be subject to the physics properties of the simulation. You only have to fine-tune the final position of the empty in order to have a smooth animation. Now, let's take a look at some of the other rigid body's properties in order to fine-tune the simulation. In the Surface Response tab, we can change the way the objects interact each other. For example, by increasing the bouncing property and reducing the friction, we have more bouncing and sliding pieces. You also have to change the same parameters in the ground. Often in these simulations, the objects continue to move and rotate for a long time. This is a common issue. And often, there is no way to stop them, even by reducing the bouncing property or increasing the friction. This is the reason why we have the following properties, namely the damping and deactivation. The damping is useful to reduce the movement and rotation of an object, as if there was a force in the opposite direction. For example, if you set the damping rotation to 1, all the objects stop rotating soon. The deactivation property, on the other hand, literally deactivates the dynamics of an object. The deactivation occurs when the linear and angular velocity decrease below the values in the related fields. So, basically, what we want to do is to change these parameters until the pieces of the asteroid break, move and rotate in a realistic way. There is another place where we have additional dynamics property. This is the scene panel. Here you can find the Rigid Body World tab that is automatically added by Blender when we create a rigid body object. As for the other dynamics properties, we won't go into too much detail about each parameter. I simply want to point out the sub steps per frame property. It basically increases the accuracy of the simulation. So, it can be a good idea to increase its value when the simulation has some strange behavior, especially when objects collide. In the Cache tab, you can define the starting and ending point of the simulation. Below, we have different options to bake the animation. As told before, when you change a parameter in a simulation, you have to go back to frame 1 and play the timeline. In the timeline, you can see a light brown line. If you click the Bake button, Blender automatically calculates the simulation and stores the result in memory. This is visually represented by a dark brown line below the timeline. It is generally recommended to bake the simulation before rendering or before adding more physical effects, such as the fire and smoke we'll see in a moment. This ensures more stability in the simulation and avoids potential glitches.